Welcome to the Roy Anthony and Friends show. Every Tuesday and every Thursday. Y'all hey, hey, tap in. Is this thing on? Can you hear me? Roy is anybody Anthony out show there? It's the spot to be, baby. Hey, tune in. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. And it's featuring the homie Big Hey. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. And it's featuring the co host Big and Cynthia Jewel. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. Everybody tune in, you dig it? It's funny as hell, my dude. It's where we can kick every Tuesday. Everything is going every down. Every Thursday. They about to do the most. It ain't a competition, it's a conversation, homie. Yo. On the weekends. Or an Anthony every show. Tuesday. It's the week, homie. Or every Thursday. Show. What you listening to? Anthony show, come on and get a tap in before we gotta tap in. What you listening to? The Roy Anthony Every show. Every Tuesday, come on and kick it with us. The Roy Anthony Every show. Every Thursday, it's going down, homeboy. The Roy Anthony show. Co tap in. Big Hank. We getting it. What you think? Hey. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony show. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony. Show. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. And it's featuring the homie Big Hank. It's, it's, it's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. It's the hottest show, homie, on the West Coast. The Roy Anthony Show. And it's featuring the co host Big Hank. And sit- what it do, what it do, what it do. What's up, man? This is Roy Anthony, man. Inviting y'all to our kickoff of our stand-up weekly comedy show at Mulaney's. That's Mulaney's Grill, one hell of an Irish bar at 168 North Marina Drive in downtown Long Beach area. Man, look here. We're about to have it cracking. We got my man Big Hank hosting the show. We got comics coming from all over the U.S., other countries. And peep this. Free parking for your cars, your yachts, and your boats. That's right. Good food. I mean, it's a five-star food location with best drinks and the number one world stand-up comedians. Yours truly, Roy Anthony, who's going to headline the first show March the 7th, 2024. You don't want to miss it, man. And this is promoted by my man, Navigators, forward slash media one. So we want to see you March the 7th. At Mulaney's, that's 168 North Marina Drive, Mulaney's Grill, and one hell of an Irish ball. I'm Roy Anthony, man. See you March the 7th. Peace. What it do, what it do, what it do. Once again, this is comedian Roy Anthony. Welcome to the Roy Anthony Live Show Podcast. The Roy Anthony Show Podcast. We got, I got My name is on a lot of different things, you understand me? But um, we got the Roy Anthony Live stand-up comedy show this Thursday, March the 7th, in um, the marina of downtown Long Beach area. Um, It's serious. It's a beautiful area. Look up Mulaney's um, Grill and one hell of an Irish bar. I want to give a shout-out big time to our promoter, Navigator forward slash Media One. That's how I like to say it. Um, Welcome to the Roy Anthony's um, show podcast. Now, this is where we, you know, like to have a conversation. It's not a confrontation. It's a conversation. My co-stars, Cynthia Joy Towner, my brother, Big Hank Norman, um, pops up. Now, Big Hank, I know, has been there. The church has been uh, working with the ballots, you know, leaving everybody getting a chance to vote. And they set up, I've seen the Asian people setting it all up at St. Luke's Holy Baptist Church. So if you're on the west side of Long Beach or in that area and you want to vote, and there's no race discrimination, you know, blacks, whites, Latinos, Asians, you can go there to St. Luke's Holy Baptist Church on the west side of Long Beach. Um, that's the church that I attend, along with Big Hank, one of the head deacons there. Um, Dr. Williams, man, one of the 
um, best examples on coming living one of them streets where he lived in the streets and um, was from the streets. And we know those testimonies where he gave himself truly to God. You know, myself, likewise, I'm a um, very spiritual. Um, I don't attend all the time. Hey, thank you, man. Jeremy Daniels, what's up, bro? He said, present. Thank you, man. You know, because um, we look at it like this. Um, Amy, before I go back into it, let me, before I go any farther, Jeremy, um, I want to give these credits, go through the credits. And once again, this, I'm Roy Anthony. Welcome to the Roy Anthony Show podcast. Like I said, Big Hank will be popping in if he has a chance because they're doing the polls there at the church at St. Luke's Holy Baptist Church. Um, Dr. Williams, who is the um, leader of the congregation, some people call it, say pastors, I say leaders, because um, he leads by an example. Um, Cynthia Joy is based out of Colorado Springs. I know she's doing a lot and she got, she's, she, her mission is to let people know you're not a survivor. You, you already got the strength in you. And, um, and so we thank God for her. Then I want to give a shout out to the W.O. platform itself, which was created, um, about five or six years ago to bring awareness to our military active and non-active, um, or um who commit suicide now if it seems like i'm looking up i'm looking at the camera but i just probably need to be like here no i'm not reading a teleprompt you know this is all from the heart you know um the wo entertainment was head was created to bring awareness to how our veterans active and non-active commit suicide and so me um and which i found you know in a theoretical way, theologically way, they say that a lot of suicides is because of depression and um, feeling inadequate and not feeling you accepted. But um, my man, um, Cal Lundy, brought to my attention that, um, like yourself, they suffer from where the nightmares and probably reliving the things that they have seen in a horrific way. A lot of us see horrible things in the movies. It's a difference when you right there in the presence of it, right? And so we, but we ask each person to do it like that cartoon movie, Baby New Year, take one day at a time. And if we can't reach multitude of people, but we can just reach one, I think, I feel that heaven rejoices because I believe in God and I believe I have salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. I don't push my faith upon other people, but if you ask me how did I get this far, I'm gonna tell you, the master plan that was set before me. Um, when I did it my way, it never worked. When I put it, just say, I'm gonna put it totally into you, God, um, things started looking brighter. Um, and so um, the W.O., which was created by Richie King, AKA Redneck Pimp, um, he's a standard comedian and um, veteran himself. I'm a non-veteran, but I support the veterans so much that if it comes called to arms, you know what I'm saying? There it is. You know, I was trained in the um, military fashions, uh, but that's another story. Um, the co-creator of the W Entertainment, my man Goose, along with our social producer, Blue Phoenix, Eighth and Daily. Then we have our good neighbors, the BB Nation, which is Backwood Veterans based out of Oregon, um, veterans and non-veterans alike. Man, got much love for him. I will be there on um, God's will, you know, not my will, God's will. I will um, be there July the 7th. This is in my heart because Carl Loomis and Caitlin are getting married. You know what I'm saying? And yours truly is going to make a, um, not only just for, it's not about me, but on their reception, I planned on doing a stand-up piece. That was my gift to them um, of because it's been a minute since I've been on the W.O., you know, it seemed like everybody was focused and seeing them. They such a wonderful family and they want to they just going to do it right. Got beautiful children. He's a hardworking man. Man, got much respect for him. Um, then we got the Long Beach All-Stars, which is the cities of Long Beach, Inglewood, not Inglewood, Lord forgive me. That's because that's the West Side. It's not nothing against Inglewood, but the Long Beach All-Stars, Long Beach. Um, Linwood, uh, Compton, and Watts, veterans and non-veterans alike come together 
Um, we got a lot of guys, veterans, like I know Rock Box, and we're going to have him on again eventually. Um, veteran, um, and um, a lot of the brothers out there, a lot of people wouldn't even believe that. A lot of, when they call it the Black Panthers, they wouldn't understand that the Black Panthers were guys who came back from Vietnam. And um, J. Edgar Hoover had a problem with it and stuff. So, and they was the first ones that I know in my neighborhood that upheld, well, you know, in, our, in my family that they upheld their rights to possess guns. And all of a sudden, they was considered a terrorist threat by a guy that was eventually um, disqualified because a little white guy's running out of his house in his dun <laughs> This guy was over the, F, the CIA and the FBI and stuff and had a dislike for blacks and made it hard, you know what I'm saying? But that's all right, because we are forgiving people, but we're not forgetful. And like I said, um, the W.O., I also want to give a shout out to the W.O., the families. Um, we're based around the U.S., different countries, then our own personal family, friends, and those who don't like us. Oh, well. Okay. So, and as y'all know, and I'm going to get this out the way because I'm going deep on somebody today, y'all. Yes. Once again, I'm about to go deep. Last week, it was U.S. Representative Tim Perchin, you know, because he brought that on himself with his um, not paying attention and doing his proper research and um just um made a mockery of a picture he got of a brother if y'all remember um mr lottermill from olathe kansas the u.s representative took this picture you see it still saw, saw it on his twitter page and as you can see where he said one of the kansas city chiefs victory parade shooters has been identified as an illegal alien now mr Burchett, he he apologized that he was wrong about the illegal alien <laughs> I mean, it had nothing to do with they. They they even let him go. He wasn't gone to jail or nothing. They just put him to the side, and then it's like, hey, and that's another part into there. But you know, it is what it is. And so, um, mentioning that Missouri Governor Parson, see, I keep up with every function in every United States. I don't just keep it to my locations. I go, well, I was tripping because Governor Parsons and them sent down a two hundred. Um, of his um what they called it the troops their troops to texas to help with the border but um there's a big thing going on with that border and it shouldn't be a political thing when kids are being taken away and all that but we're gonna um put that to the side for a second um i want to bring everybody's attention that march the 7th this coming thursday um, the start kickoff of our show, you've seen the opening that we had. Um, you say, well, why are you promoting this? For anybody around the U.S., you can watch the show because you can go. And if you're not in California, of course, um, you can always watch the show by um, going to, let's make sure I put it up right. So that way you can see, you can go to, to YouTube and watch the show live. Um, that's why we put on the You Not in Cali. You can watch the weekly comedy show in Long Beach. Go to YouTube, Roy Anthony Live, and you see it live stream. Now, we say this, uh, we said 8 30, but it's going to be 8 15. Um, a few announcements before we bring in um, the, the host of the show, which is Big Hank. But um, 8 15, so if you're in the Midwest, you know that's 10 15. You're in Mountain Time, you know that's 9 15. And if you're on the East Coast, it's 11 15. So, um, but you can see it streaming live. So let's have something to look forward to when you come in town. You can come check out one of our shows, Roy Anthony Live. Now, I was going to go in to the subject was about the southern border. That's, um, you know, southern border of California and Texas. And they and they always talking about, they make our focus go on about immigrants wait a minute my queen just came in the house let's bring her on in here before i get started what's up with you queen cynthia joy how you doing sugarfoot sweet face hey everybody what's going on what we talking about 
Oh, well, at first I want to see how you've been doing, you know. Man, listen. I know you, I know. Hey, look here. People don't understand that a storm was over my head. But guess what? It's the test. It's the test. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I, I've been telling people I'm a walking billboard for Jesus. I'm just a, a miracle sh showing what he's capable of. So, hey, yeah. we just coming through with the come through. Doing hey, hey, when you, do. hey, hey, look here, Cynthia. When, when you talk to the whole world, like we're on this worldwide web, right? Everybody's paying attention to it. And, and, and I tell people, don't go by our accounts. We got seven other platforms we're coming on at the same time. Uh -huh. All the different veterans, all the different people at their homes, they got big screens watching. We want to say thank you. Um, um, matter of fact, one of our brothers is in the house, Mr. Jeremy Daniels. He let me know he's present. And so we know a lot hey, of people Jeremy. down there in Alabama. I want to give a big shout out to my partner, old man down there in Alabama mm -hmm. from the Inglewood area. He okay. tell me to listen to the show. Um, eventually he'll be coming on. And so we had a good conversation and I'm looking forward for his podcast to start. He's coming, be coming from Alabama and we coming through all the angles, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm glad you asked me about that because last weekend you wasn't on, we went on hard about Tim, U.S. Representative Tim Burch, uh -huh. who identified a guy who was just being stopped at the Kansas City parade when the shooting occurred and they hadn't detained and the dude, because he was just in their way in investigation, they said, and detained him for a few minutes. And this dude made him as the shooter, one of the shooters and an illegal alien. His name was, at the time, he was going around as Omar Gaddafi or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Big Hank is working. They were setting the polls. You've probably seen it on Facebook. They've been having, um, you can go vote. Like I was letting anybody know. Oh, I voted vote. already. I, I, I turned yes, mine in early in the ballot. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go here. vote myself. I'll probably go do it at the church um, since I'll be back. I'll be there um, tomorrow because I was here in Kansas City, Kansas. Okay. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Um, now, I was going to talk about the southern border because there's a lot of stuff going on about the southern border. And I want to use, I want our rest, um, um, people to know that they thinking that they constantly making the politics sound like it's a bunch of Latinos. Mexicans coming through. But no, Chinese and Africans are coming through the southern border. Uh -huh. And I seen a picture where a video where they was if, if you was Asian, they let them come on through. Or if you was African, they had this gate area and they were just coming letting them come through. The Latinos was piling up. But if you was Asian for real, they was letting them come on through. And and it's like they're trying to make it seem like they're the ones bringing fentanyl over here. I guess they're the ones who brought crack over and made all the major cities have crack. <laughs> yeah, but them damn foreigners coming from them borders give all this drugs in our neighborhoods. That's what Governor Parson of Missouri said. He said that they sent down 200 troops down there to help the southern border because all the fentanyl in the state of Missouri. Yes. Mm. Blame it on somebody there. Even though uh, Andy Reid, I got respect for Andy Reid, but his son hit that little girl and they and the chief's organization I found paid off the little girl. Remember she was hit, he had been third, third offense under alcohol and all these prescription drugs and all that. He hit the little girl and next thing you know, so he had to be doing, he was only sentenced to three years on his yeah. third offense and stuff. Um, Thank God that the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. But um, guess what Governor Parsons did, Cynthia? Guess what Governor Parsons did for Andy Reid's son after he was just in there for a year? What? You, they they um, exonerated his record where you, you come out of prison, you just do the rest of your time at home, and he gets off December 25th. What? Yes. Well, it's not a surprise to me. I know the country I live in. Well, guess what? Guess what else? I checked out Governor Parsons. We we ain't we ain't gonna focus on him, but I'm just letting you know, Governor Parsons, you in my in my sights. You in my sights. I'm I'm, I'm focused on you because you exonerated 660 people from prison. And I looked at them, sir, and they. I'm not. You know, it's not fair, but you exonerated all the white folks. 
Right. You just well, being honest. Well, again, just look, look it up. Y'all yeah, can look it up yourself. Jeremy, uh, he says, connect all the dots. It's worse than that. And I believe you, man. I believe I mean, you. Like I said, it's not a surprise to me. Y'all know the country we live in. Yeah. Unless we about to get out there and do some real, like, moving around with it. It's yeah. normal. Well, when we talk like this, because people's listening. People, man, I be going through the blues with some of my stuff, you know. You remember, I, that one engineer firm loved my work. But when I got to talk about... <laughs> politics i never get the president of the company called me he said hey um you know some of the things that you said and they all the engineers were sitting in the conference room watching me yeah. so i'm letting y'all know some of my the people fans who's watching i caught to tone down my rhetoric because i'm you know they was coming at me like that for real they even suspended me for a week and stuff because they wanted me to calm down my rhetoric and so all of a sudden one day something came up i lied to you guys it was one of our shows i didn't say nothing to nobody hey cynthia right um i spoke about something i just went in, in deep in the paint and guess what as soon as, as soon as the show ended i got a phone call <laughs> it was the vice president of the company and he sounded like he was mad and agitated when i asked the phone and said hey you th this is the your last day <laughs> wow that's you'll crazy. be persecuted but again that's the thing that's not like that's not out of the norm you know what i'm saying you, yeah you bless the all days that are persecuted for for uh, um peace you feel me honor of god you know what i'm yeah. saying just keeping uh -huh. it right okay now um now when it comes to blacks you know i've been seeing this type of stuff i'm gonna tell you i do not like what i've been seeing with the especially the black comedians on and stuff going hard in the paint against each other you feel me uh-huh and it hurts for us to get anywhere when we can't do unity i be want to say forget your pride forget all that now but today i'm concentrating on one dude today i i was going to come up off the, the subject of um the southern border I'm gonna mute my mic smoothie. while I make this smoothie. Yeah, go ahead. You can mute. Yeah, I was everyone. I was going to talk about the southern border and stand-up comedy, but I'm coming in the paint today, today and Thursday. And um, Jeremy said we need an audit and resetting. The civilian of this garbage is showing man that part right there you know and and i'm glad you said that jeremy y'all seen what jeremy said now an audit and a resetting see all of the american people are tired why we just don't go with that the declaration of independence you know that document is under some thick glass for real you better not even try to touch that Declaration of Independence, but our government is still on it. But why don't we actually follow the Declarations of Independence, where it states, if this government fails us, we, the people, have the right to abolish it and start anew? Why do we can't just do a big petition and stuff? And um, I, you know, y'all, these lawyers and everything. For real, just like I said, anybody who makes under hundred thousand should be tax exempt. Why you have to pay income tax? I mean, it, it, that's that's only tax exempt. You know, you buy food and buy some, you pay the taxes, sales tax, income tax. If you make it a hundred thousand, and then the nerves to see rich people who's making a million dollars cry about paying taxes, then we take our tax money and give it to some other country for free. If we look out, my, look, one of the things that my mother raised us, look here, we may debate or squabble in our own house, but out on the streets, if you mess with one of them, you're gonna mess with all of us. We take care in house first and stuff, for real. We want guys to fight in the military and all this for us, and then we concentrate on all this BS and stuff, kids being taken, 
um, southern border. It's always shifting the blame. But if you follow the rabbit trail, it goes back, and, and you wonder why these cats wore masks because they didn't want to, you to see their identity. If you was all bold, you'd come out as a rough rider and you burn your crosses, whatever, with your face showing. Yeah, we did it. Why are you covering your face? But anyway. He said, um, we need to remove the fluff, preventing one team, one fight. That's, I'm with you. But let me tell you something. Some people try to take it and like it's a, you know, a monarchy or something. I don't even think we should have one president. I think that we should have like a four member, five member council. So they all hear him from the way the different ones and they vote because if you got five. If, if two don't like it and two do that one, he'd link you. There it is. Yeah, that's not a bad but idea. The, but the president don't really do nothing for us. We got to deal with, we got to look at our next door neighbor who's a commissioner and all this stuff. But anyway. When I talk about blacks not get, just say there are blacks, man. You got to start at home. You can't change the world, people, if you don't make up your own bed. That means you got to get your own house in order before you can change the world. It tripped me out when I would see the one Congress people, um, like the Lady Bobbitt in Colorado. You know, you representing your district in your state, but yet your house is disarrayed, hurt her kids was going down the street getting one pregnant husband you know she divorced her husband and so it seemed like before you're trying to represent anything you probably want to get your home in order i tell anybody that i don't say well yeah i'm gonna try to i want to help change the world start by your home pick up the trash in your front yard work with your neighborhood then you work with your city and your state and then you try, you know, but don't think you're going to get up with crust in your eyes and everything and say, oh, I'm going to help change the world. Well, wash your face first. Wash your face, wash your ass, and then try to help the American people. What I don't like is when you have somebody who has a platform and you make us look like we built. Yeah, guess what? Out of 14.5% of the black people who makes up the United States, we make up 14.3. I was kind of, well, I found that was 14.5, but I said 14.3, so let me correct that 0 0.02. So we make 14.5% of the Americans. Most of the crime from blacks is only 2% of the 14.5, but yet the way it makes a scene and all the magnifying and stuff like that, and stuff, it'll make it seem like we all doing crime. Especially yes. when they send you to jail for anything. What did Mr. George Floyd die over a counterfeit bill? Why did Carlilly die when they seen that he had a gun, but he pulled out his, he's going to pull his registration from the glove compartment but he gets shot what tempted um uh, mr um um audrey aubrey to get killed and ran down and caught the lady in north carolina sir who's who this person i'm about to talk about brianna taylor who's in north carolina who's in her bed with people over 40 something shots this is a gauntlet this is a gauntlet shot it all up didn't care where their bullets was hit just for real but we're the animals and i ain't saying oh but i want them to see all blacks aren't animals all whites aren't well, they know animals. that they know huh? that they know that yeah but, but what, wait a minute what are they gonna magnify yeah, but see what I'm saying is we until we unify as even in the black community. Right. So in a way you talking for nothing. You really gotta sit and talk to our people and have a real kumbaya. Okay. What they I'm glad you said that. Because this what I'm about to show, and I'm gonna comment on this guy, y'all. For what I'm about to show, 
And I'm going to let you know I don't agree with them all, and I'm going to break down his points. Now, who I'm about to talk about, his name is, I want to make sure I'm saying his name right, because I don't want, he's the Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina, and his name is um, Mark Robinson. He's the Lieutenant Governor, Mark Robinson, of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Now, last week, I was on U.S. Representative Tim Burton, and there ain't no reason why. Now, guess what? And I, I want them all to know, people, before I go in the paint, I I don't hold, I forgive them. I ask God to bless them. Like I asked um, U.S. Representative Tim Burton, please pray for wisdom, sir. God will give it abundantly to you. You take an oath on the Bible. You take an oath with your hand on the Bible. But yet, you stir up the chaos. Now, I'm going to come up with this bro This a brother. I don't want nobody to think I discriminate. I just point out what's wrong is wrong. So listen to this, Cynthia. I want everyone to see this man's video. Check out what he say. And I'm going to break out some key points on him. I've watched this video over 50 times. Check this out. There are some people that were talking about reparations in this country. They wanted reparations. And I remember I made this particular liberal so angry at me because I told them right to their face, nobody owes you anything for slavery. If you want to tell the truth about it, it is you who owes. It's you who owes. Why do you owe? Because somebody in those fields took stripes for you. Somebody after those fields were ended and slavery was ended. Somebody had to walk through Jim Crow for you. Somebody fought wars and died for you. Somebody lived less than because they didn't have what you have and they did it for you. There are people in their graves right now and they are there because they were willing to stand up and fight for you. Those folks on the Edmund Pettus Bridge carrying American flags, take that Colin Kaepernick, living in a society that he could scarcely acknowledge, something that he has never known, living with a bigotry that none of us can imagine, carried American flags on that bridge. And when they were hit upside the head with nightsticks and shot with water hoses and knocked to the ground, they got up and picked those flags up and kept marching. And they did it for you. Nobody owes you anything. If anybody owes, it's you. Because you've been the benefactor of freedom. Mr. Lieutenant Governor Mark Jack Robinson, let me make sure I say, say your name correctly, sir. Let me say this to you correctly. Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson, for one, that's a shame. I'm going to tell you the biggest shame is that you are worried about getting votes and popularity than speaking the truth. In your whole speech, I want to state this, sir, is that you didn't bring nothing up against the ones who was hitting the people in the head. You jumped from slavery to Jim Crow that my mother and them was at the age went through Jim Crow, sir. And way my grandfather said, who was born in 1913 <laughs> in, in Louisiana, where his grandmother just came over. And then some of our family members who actually fought in the Civil War stated that they reneged on the contract. Then those who did get land in the late 60s, sir, if you do your research, land was taken. You didn't bring up about what happened in Tulsa or any other of these black cities that was doing it that right, sir. I bet you most of the Robinsons that I know in the US would not agree with you, sir. But I understand and you got to be honest with yourself, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson. You was in the Republic and because we heard the ovation. And I bet you, 
at the Republican Party of North Carolina. I'm trying to picture, um, because I don't know none of the constituents I know would have been there, no blacks, and I'm a free American. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm about a man, and but was fair. Now, Mr. Mark Robinson, and anybody knows, I really got offended when you're going to say, take that Colin Kaepernick, because a lot of my white neighbors, when I brought up Colin Kaepernick, it's been a, a touchy, touchy conversation amongst me, even with our producer, Richard King and stuff, because, and I had to bring it to their attention. This man took his platform on the football field to take a knee to the national anthem, which was advised for him to do it from a white veteran. Why did you take a knee? To bring awareness how black police were killing blacks. We know he that wasn't, man he like didn't go looting, movie. like they say, we're go looting, we're go doing this and that. He, he look, this man jeopardized his whole football career for this. But yet, you sit up there and give everyone a pass. You said, oh, those who got sprayed with water hoses and all that. It sounds like you're giving them a pass. While we supposed to accept the punishment. Hey, how are you supposed to accept the punishment that you didn't even deserve in the first place? We know that man sound like a whole fool. I'm not even going to put the energy into his stupid statement because I know what he is and I know what kind of energy and what's in him ain't in me. So I'm not even going to feed what he got going on because everything he said was so much ignorance behind it and so Good much negative. Yeah. But I didn't want to attack him as a brother, you feel me? Because, dude, you are so out. This is calling a thing a thing. Okay. This ain't an attack. This is just calling a thing a thing. And he know he wouldn't be saying that to his grandparents. Let's be clear. You saying this because you were around the, the right people at that time and needing to say what you need to say to fit in. Ain't nobody got time He said that. that we got the freedom because they, they – let me tell you something, sir. We got the freedom, one. We got to give God <laughs> reference. Miss, I noticed that you didn't want. Then you call us, those who don't believe in you, you called us a liberal. That's that's a prejudice statement because if you're not a Republican, you are a liberal. Republicans are considered conservatives. So I broke down everything you said, sir. So you're not dealing with it. Yeah, I wore my hoodie on purpose with my chain, representing an organization by Mr. Steve Ballmer, who's worth billions of dollars. But anyway, I break down and listen, sir. And I want to say this to you. And other people was calling you a coon and everything. You know, I'm not going to call you out your name, but I'm just letting you know that it's a shame when you use the lives of black. Now, I'm going I'm to break it down to you because he's saying that we should be paying. Wait a minute. No, I know what he's saying. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know we should saying. pay reparations where I'm saying that we do by paying income taxes, sir. Native Americans are the only race that went through the turbulent times of history that they got communities and they don't have to pay taxes because they are Native Americans. Nowadays, if you're a Native American, you got to get verified before we let you make this. You feel me? You got to get verified. But we as Blacks who went through the more torture than the Native Americans, we still pay income tax, sir. So what you mean and we're not paying back? If anybody went through the heart, look, the people, and I feel for them because when I was a kid, I cried when I read Annie Frank's book i hurt my feelings that they would have to go through something treacherous like that and and in in a taste of what blacks was going through i couldn't you know what i'm saying Slip, um schindler's list i don't like that just like i didn't like roots why would some other race of people feel like this way but sir you you 
how you the lieutenant governor is because you think that you're speaking for the blacks. Let me tell you something while you're yelling at all the white folks out there. Let me tell you something. In the Civil War, and I would ask this question, and I'm going to ask this question to anybody in the U world, and please, if you got this answer, please tell me, especially my guys who's, um, um, especially my, bro my brothers and sisters who've been in the military and everything. What war has ever been fought where the victorious people became the oppressed? I'm asking that question. Cynthia, have you ever fought somebody and you got the best of them and you still was oppressed by them being a bully? I'm still fighting. I'm black. I live in America. What do you mean? No, no, but I'm asking you, uh, hypothetically, you had fights. You from South Side of Chicago. Yeah. You had a fight or two, right? Well, yeah, definitely. And, and somebody tried to bully you. You put it on them. Did they keep bullying you? Nah. Anybody that stood up to a bully and you put hands back on them, they are a bully to you no more. Now, mind you, Mr. Mark Jackson, in the American Revolutionary War, Blacks fought. In the Civil War, Blacks fought to win the war. How we became oppressed again is because a lot of the military, modern military knows that some of them get to keep their weapon, but there's some weaponry you supposed to turn in. It's basically a voluntary basis to turn in your weaponry. Some do not. When you go into the military, you are promised uh, a, a, a GI Bill. You you are promised so much amount of money. You can even go get a degree in the the um, the, the military and then pay for your schooling and everything. You get something out of it. In the Civil War, Mr. Mark Jackson. The, the oh, is it Mike Jackson? I don't want to call him Mark Jackson. I think that's the coach, Mr. Um, make sure is it Mark or Ma Mark? Mark Robinson. I said Jackson, I know who's it, Mr. Mark Robinson. In the Civil War, for what, what prompted them because Mr. Abraham Lincoln told um, the abolitionist Frederick Douglass, Why would blacks want to fight in a war for us when we've been dogging them out? He said, Promised him something. And he promised them 40 acres and a mule. Now, Mr. Um, Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson, there was two parts of this declaration. The first one was signed, first part of a sign to get the blacks to recruit. And if they win, help win the war with the Union against the Confederates, then the second part is going to be signed that was automatically the 40 acres in the mule. Now, sir, the Native Americans who did fight with the Confederates also, when they lost, they felt bad what they did because Oklahoma was the territory of the Native Americans. They gave Oklahoma as a gift to the blacks for fighting against them in this civil war you can look it up i'm not making this up that's how you had stuff like the tulsa black wall street established because Oak, the state of oklahoma was promised to the blacks as a gift for fighting against them in the civil war it wasn't just whites fighting against blacks in the civil war it was blacks and whites from the north fighting against a um whites native americans and some other blacks found out it was also blacks that fought for the confederate side in the civil war now what i was told from my grandfather 
is for us not to put that flag down for equality and make sure that they pay the contract because what they did was when abraham lincoln went to sign was supposed to sign that second part of the emancipation proclamation he they said we got to have him dead tonight we we can't wait we need him dead not now but right now they knew that abraham lincoln was going to was going to the um opera theater to watch a play or something like that and he was sitting up there in the presidential booth they couldn't get nobody um, um the powers to be got a dude called john wilkes booth who was an actor and most of the people would like to meet john wilkes booth and stuff shake his hand so it wasn't nothing for him to say hey you know everyone's like oh yeah let me meet him and stuff right and he comes up there say how you doing president pop 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 because they did not want him to sign that second part sir which a lot of scholars and they know who i'm talking about because i've talked and dealt with scholars black scholars from Harvard, other scholars from different universities, all that. Roy Anthony stands totally above because God gives me my wisdom. And he told me to read books. Since I was a kid in third grade, I read encyclopedias back and forth. I would listen to speeches and stuff. And be like, wow, when I read the Willie Lynch um, mammal for the psychological um, thinking to, of terrorism, when I want um the um art of art of war the asian guy um forget the name but uh, the art of war and the theories of how they made made someone get in shape what they did they took a group of women sir and they did this the, the women was all frolically like yeah and and the dude said the head general said this is what you do he shot the, the head lady in the head bat killed her guess what the mother women did <laughs> yes sir now, Mr. Lieutenant Governor Mark Jackson of North Carolina, I never heard you say anything for one about Breonna Taylor. I see you in the dish, what's his name, the, the head district attorney of the state who married um, the senator, what's the Republican senator um, of Congress? He, 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 when he talks, he sounds like Jimmy Stewart. Um, he's one of them older cats, got that long neck and stuff. And it's, uh, anybody can help me out with that. Um, the attorney general married his granddaughter down there, black dude, you know. But I'm, 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 so then, Lieutenant Governor, the black folks have paid, been paying reparations by paying income tax and um let me bring you up to speed sir in the 60s where land was taken from them. you didn't say that um re, um um com, misconstrued contracts and agreements stuff like that while you were sitting there at your grandparents house eating pig knuckles and and hog malls and, and hog head cheese and all that because you was a big girth guy and i know that you didn't get that girth by eating escargo and um for you know all all that weight you got on you sir is from eating collard greens and stuff like that now my biggest thing is why is it that you will try to condemn blacks and then what i just didn't like is when he said a liberal well i guess all of us is liberals because if i i i voted republican a couple of times i never felt like attacking nobody and talking about there was a liberal you know, you're a conservative you ain't y'all they act like they crips and bloods with that but i'm not into that i'm into united states 
come together and now here you are causing more division i was just on these comedians talking all up on each other and stuff i said i'm gonna better be a piece of my set coming this this um thursday you know why you you feel me you're causing that division but then here you got this guy and and i'm not the only one who feels like that but some people don't have what to say so what they do is they get combative and attack people like he did that was uncalled for yeah why would you attack colin kaepernick bro what sport did you play and and anybody check this out you you can talk about he wasn't that good he got them to the super bowl just like brock Purdy did he didn't win it but he took offense because guess what he could have been look and mark mark robinson is jealous because colin kaepernick was raised in a white household by his his parents are who's adopted him are white guess what they said sir they was proud of him that's what they said Starlet Evans said, yes, you are right. What's up, Starlet? What's they up, was Starlet? proud of him. Oh, so let, let's, <laughs> let's look at this. Let's do some comparisons, sir. I'm going to do some comparisons. Yes, I'm going to bring them back up. They can say Roy's petty since you always want. What did the man do? He got on his knees and stuff. He didn't know. He don't know me. He didn't know none of the homies. Had, but it was getting to a point we tired of. Blacks getting killed. And I'm saying that blacks don't, sh um, whites don't get killed by the police, but they're shooting back. It's the difference of getting shot when you thinking you got a gun, you got a cell phone. How does a cell phone look like a gun? I seem like they don't get shot the same. Oh, they do. I've seen the statistics. They yeah. do, but that's it's always in a shootout with the police. But that's why it ain't the same. That's what that's what I'm saying. It's not the same. But um, oh, wait a minute. Starter said, hi, pretty. Look, it's not the same, but I'm just saying is when you're, so this man takes a knee because innocent blacks are getting killed. Okay. Breonna Taylor, sir, in North Carolina is laying there in her bed with her dude. Police force files, everything. They gone to prison. But this lady, their family still don't have Brendan Taylor. I mean, Breonna Taylor, she's dead. Then you want to get up here? Man, that's up. Do you know how their family, how do you feel? He's the lieutenant governor. That means he's under, he's a step under the governor. Y'all voted for it, Mark Jackson. Well, we probably know who voted for him because the population. <laughs> And then, hey, if you're making money with them, you feel me? Right. But let, I'm doing a comparison. But this man took a knee. Colin Kaepernick took a knee. And he took the knee to bring awareness because they knew they were going to say, hey, you took a knee through the national anthem. He said, yes, I want to bring awareness to how police are killing. Oh, you demigod, you this and that. Then people was attacking it who didn't even know, or it made me ask my some of my friends, my wife. Guess what? You're not empathetic with us. You you was a they was attacking Colin Kaepernick. Player. He wasn't that good of a football player anyway. Dude, we ain't not talking about him. It's the gesture. Did you get the gesture, sir? You 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 cuss this man. You you dislike this man. Because he took a knee, he played this much, but he took a knee to bring awareness to how police was killing blacks for no other reasons. You got to be, don't be a police officer, you scared. You talking about, oh, I thought he was reaching for a gun. What you thought is took someone's life. You took someone's life because you thought they had a gun. That's fair. Okay, but. You, you you don't accept Colin Kaepernick, but you accept the two brothers where one got his shirt off, drinking beer on national TV, screaming, 
your, 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 your homegirl is there. When I found out there's millions of Swifties, want them on your team if you're in a fight. <laughs> Taylor Swift there, that he picks up another little girl. Oh, that's all cool. Yes, Kelsey's. The other Kelsey at the Super Bowl bumps into man. That's I. I've seen a lot of uh, things in Super Bowl. Yes, I've seen Colin Kaepernick lose in the Super Bowl. We didn't get mad. We didn't uh, go to war. He lost. We didn't do none of that. But when I see this man bump this. It, it, it just took something out of me when I see him bump at bump this man and then yelled at him. And then I see this older man and stuff make a lie for you. That's why the governor of Parson must have felt so sorry for Andy Reid that he said, forget it. I'm you you just been bumped on national TV in the Super Bowl and and yelled in your face, and but you still won it. Ha ha, I'm gonna exonerate your son and let him come on home and do his prison time at home while he can eat cornflakes and some Cheerios and and drink at home and and do some community services 10 hours a week and and whoop the wham and wham the whoop but we accept that mr lieutenant governor mark robinson i probably wouldn't want to i probably was going to get ready to vote republican but you are attacking me sir telling me what they don't owe that's a lie contracts ain't been fulfilled declaration the the um the emancipation proclamation hasn't been signed yes we feel that for our ancestors look we giving money to ukrainian why russia said that's their land we we paying troops more to go down to a border it's because they the ones bring that now okay but the last thing we need is someone while we're trying to because we're going along see if you understand blacks go along with the markers i've had my white neighbors ask me man it's surprising that black sis don't go into an uproar and everything because we forgiving you ever know we're the most forgiving people we try to line our lives really with god there's not a person i know in my black family, if we seen a white dude, even if he was mean, whatever, and he was hungry in the desert, guess what? We're going to give him a chance. At, look at, okay, go research Governor George Wallace. He was against blacks. It was a, guess what? When he when when the, he started seeing he was, his ways and he started feeling repentance and stuff, you know, the devil will take you out when he's starting to recognize that you headed to God. It's going to constituent shot him, end up in a wheelchair. Guess what he did? He went to the black church. It was heavy on his heart. He was, he asked for forgiveness and show him crying. Check it out. The devil wanted to kill him before he made that happen. Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson of North Carolina. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm ashamed that you use your, because you're black, you felt that you're qualified to speak for the blacks. I never heard your voice for when Breonna Taylor got killed. Now, you got, you try to give ammo just like down in Florida. If I was anybody in Florida, athletes and stuff like that, that went to Florida, you know, Florida because Deion Sanders, I wouldn't go to that because they took it out all um teaching about black culture and race and all that don't play their football don't play their sports go to all the other universities except florida's that's why I'm, my kids ain't gonna go there and you can't you know for real not saying it's divided but we should all know our history why would should we wash our history up but we'll uphold what happened in the holocaust I, I I uphold that, but I also uphold what happened with blacks. I also hold uh, what what happened with our white folks in America. 
I uphold that. There were some black young people getting at the Woodstocks and, and all that. They was protesting against the Vietnam War. They was getting hit upside the head and everything. And it ain't the people, it's the demons. I, I pursue you, Lieutenant Governor Mark Jackson, to pray and, and ask you to ask for wisdom too, sir. I'm going I'm to I'm give you another little thing, man. I've never seen none of the rappers, like, you know, none of the cats. I haven't seen no modern groups asking for reparations. Um, our state, California, was because they actually um, used government control to take over people's lands. And they want to rebuild it back. Slavery it was slavery. People, even though the slavery ended, it was still controlled. Why you think Jim Crow? And the Jim Crow was in the 50s and the 60s. Oh, we just won this country back, but we got to come through the back to the restaurant. You then condemn those who hit those people in the head. Oh, that just was happening. I guess water hose was just invisible. People, the holes came up like Harry Potter and started spraying them people. Those who you said the flags got knocked down and they got picked back up. How dare you use something that was righteous for these people? Because how do you know what the ancestors wanted? I went down there and I drove through North Carolina because I was working doing, and I'm going to be getting off where I was working. I'm a civil designer by trade. I tell people clothes don't make Roy. It's my soul and what I see and I think and I, Asked the Lord, give me wisdom. He told me to put away about the southern border. This is more conflicting because we've been having, every time I look up, the media is showing us going against each other. Them two blacks, the spirit gets in two blacks, they shooting at each other, which prompted all the whites to capture blacks that they had to let go because they wasn't part of that. They, they don't tell you, they tell you, oh, yeah, we got the two, but it was about 20 blacks that was captured. For real, they ain't gonna tell you that part. Just like Senator Burchant, um, you uh, U.S. Representative Tim Burchant with his line. But we forgive you, sir, because God told me to forgive so I can be forgiven, and that way I can ask him for anything. And I don't ask for no downfall or anything on you. I ask God to bless you and your family and everything. Um, Lieutenant Governor Mark Jackson, I don't comp deuces. I just say I thank God that he'll open up your heart and I still ask him to bless your family because you know not what you're saying and you're going for a political standpoint. But let me tell you something, sir. The same people you look at as you're going up, it's the same people you look at going down. I'm going to let you know that. Governor George Wallace was against blacks big time. And he had to come to grace. He had to, for real. Why attack like that? As you've been a lieutenant governor and you y'all trying to win the presidency and get everybody, wouldn't you think that you would stop trying to to, to still cause the vision? Because now you cause where people's mad at you unify us man use your platform to unify don't tear down and do not leave other people's names out of there out your mouth what you said about colin kaepernick was totally disrespectful and that was out of line man for real and then what if somebody called you 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 pork chop gristle eating turnip green juice drinking um chitlin noodle chitlin skin sipping <laughs> what they called you out your name come on man use wisdom bro man y'all y'all making it sickening man Je thomas jefferson's right man if this if our if if this government is failing us we the people we have ones who believes in humanity, black, white, Latino. If you believe, then we should be able to do a petition and be like, let's abolish this stuff and start anew. 
we're the laughing stock of the of the of the world you know what they say to us who are you to tell us what's going on in our country look what's going on over there hey man pray for me as i pray for y'all because i'm gonna tell the truth and like i've told people i thank god that i did not die back in the days i tell y'all about that i was in my foolishness um don't be scared fight the fight you know if i had to be a politician I think I'll be pushing about the American people. You want our votes, but you seem like you take our votes and get in the office to help somebody else. I will push that people who makes under 100000 do not have to pay income taxes. We will abolish off this government and make it where general people ran the congress and the lawyers just make sure that they write it up list like you would need a lawyer for a civil case anyway man my name is roy anthony uh, my co-stars you seen me cynthia joy big hank is working the polls if you're in the area of saint luke's holy baptist church on the west side of long beach um go get your vote on and um i want to give a shout out to my family friends especially my moms uh, got love for you Roy Anthony's out of here. Peace. Welcome to the Roy Anthony and every Tuesday and every Thursday. Hey, hey, tap in. Is this thing on? Can you hear me?